Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Ranga Rao Karanam. In this video, let's look at some of the important interview questions around Spring Boot. We'll be looking at various questions like Spring Boot versus Spring MVC versus Spring. What is auto configuration? What are starter projects? Can you explain it with an example? What are the examples of starter projects? How can you create production ready applications in quick time? What is the easiest approach to create Spring Boot project? How do you auto reload your application? How do you use embedded servers with Spring Boot? And a wide variety of other stuff. Let's get quickly started with Spring Boot versus Spring MVC versus Spring. How do they compare? Let's start with the basics. Spring is all about dependency injection. It makes the code loosely coupled. Spring MVC is all about how can I develop web applications very, very quickly in a loosely coupled way. Spring Boot solves the amount of configuration that is needed. With Spring and Spring MVC, you need to configure data sources, view resolvers, web jars, and a wide variety of stuff. Spring Boot says, Okay, I'll look at what are the jars available in the class path and I'll configure everything immediately. That's what Spring Boot enables. In addition to that, Spring Boot also provides a lot of non-functional features. It helps in making the monitoring of the applications very, very easy. What is on auto configuration? Basically, auto configuration is a feature of Spring Boot where it looks at the frameworks available in the class path and it looks at existing configuration for the application. It looks at both of these and it decides what configuration is needed, what can be automatically configured. If it sees a JPA jar on the class path, it automatically configures an entity manager, it automatically configures a data source. If it sees a Spring MVC jar on the class path, it would automatically configure a dispatcher servlet, it will automatically configure an error page and an error response. What are Spring Boot startup projects? Whenever you develop a project with Spring or Spring MVC or Hibernate, you need to add a lot of dependencies in. You need to manage their versions. You need to configure a lot of stuff. Spring Boot starter projects help you in avoiding all that. So if you add in a simple starter project like Spring Boot Starter Web, the dependency might look simple, but it brings in a lot of jars along with it. It would bring in all the spring related jars, it would bring in all the web MVC related jars, it would bring in Jackson jars for JSON binding, it brings in validation jars like validation API and Hibernate validator, it brings in embedded servlet container like Tomcat. So a startup project automatically brings in all the dependencies that are needed to develop that kind of a project. So a web starter would help you to develop a web application very, very quickly. Now, what are the other starter project options that Spring Boot provides? Spring Boot provides a wide variety of starters, web services to develop SOAP web services. Starter web is web and RESTful application. Starter test is to develop unit tests and integration tests. Starter JDBC is to write traditional JDBC code, Spring JDBC code. Starter HTOS is to add HTOS features to your services. Starter security is to add authentication and authorization using Spring security. Data JPA is to add integration with JPA and Hibernate. Data REST is to expose RESTful services around your data JPA stuff. How does Spring enable, actually Spring Boot enable production ready applications in quick time? Number one, we already talked about a lot of starters which makes it easy to configure your dependencies and configure the data source, view resolvers and other kind of stuff automatically. The other thing, is it provides the non-functional features out of the box like caching, logging, monitoring, and embedded servers. Spring Boot Actuator provides great monitoring. Spring Boot Undertow, Jetty, and Tomcat are all embedded server features. Logging enables logging quickly using logback. Cache, Spring Boot Starter Cache enables Spring Framework's caching support. What is the easiest approach to create a Spring Boot project? It's easy. All that you need to do is go to start.spring.io, choose the dependencies you'd want, Enter a group ID and artifact ID and click generate project. You can import it as a Maven project into Eclipse and you are ready. That's as easy as it is to create Spring Boot projects with start.spring.io. A lot of people ask, 
if that's the only way to create Spring Boot projects? The answer is no. You can set up a normal Maven project, add the right dependencies, and you can also do it manually. Now, what are the features that Spring Boot Maven plugin provides? If you look at the prompt.xml, there is something called Spring Boot Maven plugin. What does it do? Spring Boot Run is used to run your Spring Boot application. So if you go MVN Spring Boot colon run, then it runs your Spring Boot application. If you do MVN Spring Boot repackage, it creates your jar or var which you can take and deploy it. If you do Spring Boot start and stop, it manages the life cycle of your Spring Boot applications, especially for your unit tests and integration tests. If you do Spring Boot build info, it generates the build information which can be used by the actuator. The next question is how do I enable auto reload of the application using Spring Boot? You can use Spring Boot developer tools. Add, just add this dependency and restart your application. If you make any change, then you'd see that everything is automatically reloaded. Now, what and why embedded servers? Why do we need embedded servers and all that kind of stuff? Typically, when we want to deploy an application onto a virtual machine, what do you need to? You need to install Java, then install the web server or the application server, Tomcat, WebSphere, WebLogic, and all that fun stuff. And then you need to deploy the application var. Why don't we simplify it? Why don't we make server a part of the application? That's the embedded server concept. So what we would do as part of the embedded servers is the embedded server, either it's Tomcat, Jetty, or Ambrakto, they are included as part of the application jar. And then there are only two steps, right? So you just need to install Java and run the application. So it makes it easy to deploy stuff. What is Spring Data? Spring Data is one of the projects under the umbrella of Spring Boot. Its mission is to provide a abstraction, a simple abstraction to be able to talk to multiple kinds of databases. There are a wide variety of databases, right? Relational, non-relational, MapReduce, cloud-based databases, big data databases. The aim of Spring Data is to provide one way to access all these data. And there is a specific thing in Spring Data called Spring Data JPA, which is used to provide a simple approach to creating JPA repositories. When we, whenever we create a JPA repository, there is a lot of duplicate code involved. And with Spring Data JPA, you don't really need to do all that. If you create a simple interface like this, it would provide all the basic methods to do the CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. What is Spring Data REST? Spring Data REST is one of the frameworks which can be built on top of Spring Data JPA and you can expose HTOS RESTful services. So all that you need to do is, in the early example, we looked at to-do repository, extending CRUD repository, right? On top of it, you need to put an annotation called at repository, red resource, rest resource, and give the path at which it needs to be exposed. And once you do that, you would be exposing a lot of RESTful services. You'd be able to expose a post URL, and you'd be able to see that you'd be able to create a new to-do. You'd be able to do a get request to that, and you'd be able to see what are all the details that are present in there. What is the need for profiles? Enterprise application development is complex, right? Because you have multiple environments, dev, QA, stage, and production. And how do you make sure that you have different configuration for each of these environments? That's where profiles come into picture. They help you in providing different configuration for different environments. All that you need to do is to configure an environment variable saying this is the active profile and the configuration would be picked up based on the active profile. For example, if I have application properties of this kind, application hyphen dev dot properties of this kind and application hyphen prod properties of this kind. If you set the profile as dev, then this property is picked up. If you set the profile as prod, then this property is picked up. In this video, we looked at some of the interview questions related to Spring Boot. I would recommend you to try the URL which is below underneath the video to look at more interview questions and we also have an awesome course for entire Spring interview questions. I would recommend you to check that out too. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.